everybody. Wanted to add my two cents into the discussion that has been happening lately on content creation and fair use. Uh, this has been led by Doug Walker over at Nostalgia Critic, and I thought that I would share you my opinion on fair use and how it is applied here on YouTube. Fair use is a legal principle. It's part of the Copyright uh, Act. And it basically says that people have the right to use copyrighted content for the purposes of education, satire, or criticism. And this basically protects people that want to comment on other people's work or art them to do so without having the permission of the copyright holder. The copyright holder give permission to somebody to talk about or critique their work and unless it's a 100% fluff piece. And so it just allows for that to exist. However, uh, fair use is a defense. It is not a right. It's not something that you inherently have like freedom of speech or something like that but it is something that you can use in a courtroom to defend yourself when you are in a legal dispute over copyright so that's something people sometimes miss in the discussion of fair use also youtube as a private company has the right to police their videos however they see fit however if they want to have a flourishing creative community youtube needs to be more consistent they need to be more fair and they need to have appropriate channels that you can resolve questions about fair use none of that is currently in place so basically what happens now is there's an automatic system that will get triggered sometimes if you use copyrighted content in your video. And sometimes you aren't even using copyrighted content in your video, but the automatic detection will claim that you are and you aren't. And that's where it starts to get into some problems. Sometimes people that own copyrighted content will file a dispute, will file a claim on your video. So there's sort of two different things. Some of it's just an automatic trigger, some of it's actually a person filing a claim. Then you as a content creator have the opportunity then to dispute the claim and explain your case about fair use. The thing that sucks about this is that you lose all of the monetization during that time period that you're disputing and that goes to the person that is claiming copyright, that is filing the claim. There's no reason to not have people file lots and lots of claims because they get that money from whenever the, they could get 30 days of income because that's how long they have to, to fight the claim. And a lot of times really only the first couple of days on a video are what matters as far as views. By the time things get resolved, then it's pretty much mute point as far as income on the video. It also can create strikes on your account, which are a lot more serious uh, than the disputed claims. Uh, if you get a strike, that can seriously limit the number of videos that you can post. It can limit the amount of time that your videos can be. It can limit a lot of different things. And you can even have, without any anybody's warning or anything, your whole channel taken off uh, because of a strike. You can have, and, and there's nothing you can do about it except for wait and hope that your claim, your appeal goes through. The problem with all of this is that, first of all, like I said, you do not get the monetization while the dispute is happening. There's the motivation for the people that are filing the claims to file the claims, and there's no reason for them not to do it. Also extremely frustrating because there are no channels to go through with YouTube to defend yourself when your channel gets taken off air. There's no one to talk to. There's no support. There's no, you know, you just have these forms that you can fill out, but you, you're given no, no customer service of any kind. And that's just not fair. Uh, you're working with computers the whole time. And so the problem that YouTube has is that they are trying to, I mean, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of claims that are made every day. They're trying to manage this in some way, but it's just not working because it leaves people that have false claims on their videos 
they're just screwed. And so it's just not working. They need to find some way to provide some form of customer service for the people that are making the videos. I, I mean, I even thought that they could set up, they have the YouTube Red. Why not make that a feature of YouTube Red that you get, you're paying, I think, $5 a month. Why not have that be a part of YouTube Red that you get an actual customer service department and you get somebody that can help you when you resolve, when you have these kinds of claims? Because uh, some of them are just so ridiculous and it's very frustrating as a content creator. Some of them I have no problem with. Like if I have a Friday Five video that gets flagged, I don't care. I just leave that fine. I, I'm not going to argue with that one because I, I don't feel like I'm really critiquing the music in Friday Five. But some of them are just ridiculous. Like uh, in my Brexit Tiffany's video, I literally had a still picture for under 10 seconds seven seconds I think it was and it got flagged for copyright and I know people that have had no problem no copyrighted content at all that have had their whole channels taken off I know people that have had uh, my uh, friend Rob's sister Nino he had his whole channel taken off because of an old video that he had done uh, where he had done Survivor Jeopardy. He had the Jeopardy theme song playing in, in, in little snippets throughout the video. And he's done hundreds of videos and never had any problem, but for that video, it, it took down his whole channel, which is just ridiculous. That's so extreme. And so there has to be kind of a happy medium between protecting copyright holders and protecting content creators from these false claims. And there has to be a an effective system for defending yourself against these claims and otherwise YouTube is just going to become a whole bunch of talking heads where there's no creative content there's nobody that's trying anything different and that's not good for YouTube like do they want creativity because I tell you right now like I am just going to continue to use some some copyrighted content because I am not going to do my Disney Canon project and not use any visuals to explain what I'm trying to say. That would be horrible. Like, it just doesn't make sense. I can't talk about Fantasia and not show you some of the visuals. Otherwise, it's just, it's just me saying, oh, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's great. And that doesn't mean anything. Like, why would you want to watch that? And so I am, I, it's not a question of, if it'll happen to me, I, it's just a question of when it'll happen to me. I'm fully expecting at one point or another for my channel to be taken off the air for some kind of copyright claim, but I, I'm trying my best to follow the rules. All clips to under 25 seconds, which seems to be the sweet spot for music clips and for other clips, but I still sometimes get hits, but I'm just waiting for that time when my channel gets taken off the air. And so that's why it's really important you follow me on Facebook and Twitter because when that does happen, I will set up a secondary channel until my original channel gets resolved. But it's just, it's not something that inspires some people to be creative when there's, when they know that their entire channel can be taken off of the air for something that was is within the realms of acceptable fair use. And yeah, maybe not everybody can afford to go to court and defend themselves about fair use, but nevertheless, it's certainly within the spirit of the law. And so I just think that YouTube needs to have a better way of policing this system and have a way that you can you have some kind of customer service so that you can find some kind of resolve when these things happen and you know it's just ridiculous that it takes even these big time youtubers it takes them weeks to get back on the air and they only get it because they are big if you're small it could take months and months and months if 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 you can get it back at all so definitely save all of your content if you're a content creator. I definitely have been doing that for a long time. Save it and and just keep keep creating content. Don't let it stop you. Don't let it. I know there's a lot of people don't participate in Friday Five because they're scared of having their channel taken down. Well, the fact is, is you can have your channel taken down for for doing nothing at all. Like I had my that breakfast at Tiffany's 
video like the the it's just a still image that is so brief and and that got a claim on it so that can happen to anybody and so don't be afraid to participate in the Friday Five just because of all of this. So that's basically everything I have to say about all this. I understand that fair use is a legal defense, that it's not a right. I understand that YouTube has the right to police their videos uh, however they see fit, but I, I think they are stifling creativity. They are, their system does not provide a way to reasonably defend yourself against these claims it there is a motivation to to file false claims and so it does thwart creativity and it is extremely frustrating so that's kind of my say on that and i just hope that with all these people talking about it that some change will be made and that they will be motivated to put out fair reasonable system for for monitoring copyright and fair use. So that's what I have to say about that. Put in the comment section, let me know what you think about this. And uh, thanks so much, please subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to you later, bye.